Oh, you're already Blind. in the right now. I'm beyond PC. Nice. Good shit, Kier. Thanks, bro. So I remember waiting for a Valorant key whenever the beta was out. I prayed and prayed that I would get one off of stream, and eventually I did. Now, not being a regular CSGO player, I could say that I was not very comfortable with the mechanics of Valorant. Coming from Rainbow Six, I was used to being able to walk and shoot, and even though I did play a little bit of CSGO with my friends, I can comfortably say that I did not grasp the basic concept of movement and shooting in that game. So when I heard of Valorant, I decided to give it a try and see if I can get good at the mechanics that I had so much trouble with before. So one day after watching streams for about a day or two non-stop, I left them on all day, I got a beta key and I decided to play. Now like I mentioned earlier and my lack of experience with CSGO, I was extremely bad at the game and I had to try so hard just to get a few kills when first starting. My aim was pretty decent but my movement was trash and I ended up dying a lot in gunfights that I shouldn't lose. Well anyway, I grinded the game and when rank came out, I decided to give it a try with my friends and I got ranked Iron 1. Now I was devastated. I knew that my aim was above average and I thought that there was no way that I could be that bad. But I thought to myself, I sat in my room and I was like, wow, maybe I really am that bad and maybe I just haven't noticed. Well anyway, ever since that day, I've been grinding Valorant nonstop and now I can proudly say that I have reached the Immortal rank. And along the way from Iron Tree Immortal, I learned so many things that I wish I knew beforehand. So hopefully saving you guys the trouble, I'm going to teach you everything I learned from my grind from Iron Tree Immortal and hopefully show you guys a few things that you might not have known that will eventually help you in your own grind. Now I'm going to start off the video with something that's a little bit controversial but it's something that I do agree with and something that a lot of you might not know. If you are under plat and maybe even under gold, you should not be worrying about team comp. I know what you're going to say, oh my god Kiri, how can you not worry about team comp, that's the basis of Valorant. And yes, I do agree. The whole point of this game is to play with your team and use your abilities in a way that will help you get to the objective and doing it safely. That being said, however, in order to get the full effect of your entire character roster in your team, you're going to have to use some kind of coordination and sadly that just isn't found in lower ranks. The potential of each player greatly, greatly affects how much effect that their character has on the game. And if you're going to be trying to fill in silver, bronze, iron, or sometimes even gold, and you're playing an, an agent that you are not comfortable with, then you might be throwing away the entire game because odds are the people that you play with and the characters they pick are not going to be used to their full effect. And you're better off picking whoever you feel comfortable with. So for example, if you know that you're a really good Phoenix and you feel like you're good enough to carry the game with Phoenix, then you should pick Phoenix, even though you guys need to smoke. And like I said, I know this is going to be controversial and some of you may not agree with me, but this is something that I did and this is pretty much what worked out for me. When I play Duelist, I feel like I could frag out pretty easy and I decided to go Reyna or Jet every time I played and ever since then, I've been slowly grinding my way to the top. Now, this is not a habit that you should pick up because once you get to plat, then you are definitely going to have to play a good team comp to get around and to win. But for the lower ranks, I think that this is the play to do. You're going to have to learn a character and you're going to have to carry with that character if you do want to climb out of this elo hell. So in conclusion for step number one, try not to fill if you're in these lower ranks. Try to play whoever you feel comfortable with. And if you do feel comfortable with a smoke or a sentinel and that's the person they need, then of course, yeah, play that character. You don't always have to play a duelist to carry, but you have to play who you feel comfortable with and make sure that you don't try to fill because the silvers on your other team are telling you that you have to. Now moving on to step number two, and this is being the IGL when you have a game that's completely quiet. Now even in Immortal games that I have, I still have teams that don't make a sound the entire game, and sometimes it takes your voice to initiate the comms to begin. If you have a team that's not saying anything, then you can try to give callouts and become the IGL leader because I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this are actually really good players and you have all of the knowledge down for the game. You just might be liking a team or maybe some mechanics. But if you do have the know-how and know of a lot of strats on Valorant, then you could be the guy that calls it out and that might lead your team to victory. In the lower ranks especially, there are a lot of teams that run around like headless chickens the entire time and they don't really try to get to a side together or they don't have any formulated plan. So you being the one to try to call it out and try to call out what you're going to do could get your entire team riled up and working together and that's going to beat most of the other teams at low ranks that are just walking around and doing the same thing that you were doing before you started IGLing. Now it's during this time in your grinding phase that you want to go to YouTube and try to learn as many tips and tricks and strats as you possibly can because if you are going to be trying to become the IGL leader in every game you play and doing it in a respectful way by the way don't be mean to anybody then you're going to have to know what you're doing and you're going to have to know how to get into the heads of the people you're playing against. 
You don't know how many games we've won because me or the homie I queue with decide to try to be the IGL in game and try to tell people what to do. Like I said before, we're not doing this in a disrespectful way. We're just trying to call out a team play. And nine times out of ten, if you ask nice enough, then people will oblige to whatever you say. So just try to be nice about it and try to become informed of the strats and the meta of the game and you should be okay. Now speaking of my homie, we're going to talk about step number three and that is trying not to five stack. Now, whenever I play Valorant, I either solo queue or I duo queue. Now, when I duo queue, it's like 90% of the time and I play with my homie Omar, but I never, almost never get more people than that on my team. I honestly think that duo queuing is the play if you want to rank up. If you do play with four or five people, then you're going to go up against other stacks that most likely play together all the time. Whenever you stack in Valorant, the odds of you getting another stack are increased significantly. That being said, if you stack in the group of random people, then the odds are you guys are not going to have the chemistry to go up against another stack that does play together all the time and does have that chemistry. And the way Valorant works is that if you don't get another stack, whenever you have a stack, you're going to get put up against players that are so low, but they're all going to be individually better than you. So in my opinion, if you do want to rank up and you do want to try to avoid stacks, then of course, one to maybe three people max in your party should be the way to go. But I suggest that dual queuing is the best thing. Now, of course, there's going to be times where you're not going to be able to avoid five stacks. It's going to happen. Like I said before, if you are a higher rank than the five stack you're playing against, you might get that. But that's unavoidable. And that is sadly part of the game. Now, one thing that I had a lot of trouble with while going up the ranks, and it is probably the most important tip I'm going to tell you today, is having to play with confidence. I remember being put up against teams that were much higher ranked than me, and I felt scared to peek them. And that really made me play back. Now, whenever you play scared, they kind of know that you're playing back. So they almost, it, that limits the options to where you can be, if that makes sense. Playing scared is probably the worst thing that you can do in this game. If the other team knows that you're going to play scared, then they're going to lose respect for your team. And losing respect for your team is something, uh, it's probably the least thing you want. And I know a lot of you are thinking, why should I care what the other team thinks, right? It's about my team and their team. You know, if we're good enough, we're going to win. And that's that. Okay, but think of it this way. If the other team respects you, they're going to play with caution, okay? They're going to play according to the meta. They're going to go for usual strats, and they're going to go for things that is most commonly seen in rank, and that's basically what you always practice against. When the enemy team loses respect for you and your team, however, they're going to play however the fuck they want to play because they're going to feel like their team is way better than yours, and they can just stomp you. Whenever they start doing that, then it's going to be so hard to come back because you're not going to be able to predict what they're going to do. They're going to have so much confidence that there's going to be one on mid, one on B, one's going to be flanking side. Okay, they're not going to be scared of you. And that whenever they're not scared of you, having that kind of confidence is extremely dangerous for a team who's expecting the meta to be played against them. Okay, they're going to be playing anti-meta. They're going to be playing for kills. And if you're scared and you're not playing confidently, then they're just going to take advantage of your scared team. And that's going to be the end of that game. So establishing your dominance as a player and a team early on is very important to how the game can go off. I'm sure a lot of you have been destroyed on pistol round by the enemy team. And you sit there and you're just like, wow, like these guys are probably really, really good. And for the entire game, you all are playing kind of scared because y'all got shit on on pistol round and you think that they might have sick ass aim or whatever. But that's not the case because if they win pistol round like that and that's how you feel immediately after losing the first round, then they've already won the game. Valorant is very much psychological as it is uh, physical and it's so hard to get that into your head. Trust me, it was hard for me, but it's something you have to learn. Don't be afraid to peak angles just because you've been shit on the last two rounds, okay? Don't be afraid to peak stuff. Don't be afraid. I mean, don't throw either, right? Don't be throwing games if you're up like two dudes and then they have like 10 seconds. But if you have the possibility to peak somebody and you think you might get a kill, have confidence in your aim and don't be afraid to do so. Now, one of the biggest things when it comes to low ranks that you might be doing if you are a low rank is not trading out your fellow players or baiting people, even if it is by accident. If your teammate gets killed, it is your job to go and try to kill the person that killed him as fast as possible. If you let the enemy player that killed your teammate get away, then your teammate died for nothing and that brings no value to the team at all. It is better to risk dying than not getting that kill and letting him go scot-free. Now you have to get into the mindset of doing this. If you don't do it, you're going to get raged on so bad by your teammates at higher ranks and you're eventually going to start losing games because you're not trading out your friends. Now the same can be said for double peaking angles. At higher ranks, it is better for you to double peak shit because odds are that both of you shooting at one target will have a higher chance of getting that kill. Just make sure not to line up behind them. That way they won't 
you know, you all won't get killed by the same bullet. So whenever people hear the word baiting, they always think that it's on purpose, that they're purposely waiting for their teammate to go into objective, that way they can run in and trade them out after they die. But that doesn't always happen on purpose. Now what I've noticed in being in the lower ranks is that if I don't play duelist and I don't run in to sight by myself, then odds are my team is just going to sit around outside of sight, everyone's going to rotate from the defensive team onto the site that I'm going to hit, and we're all going to get shit on. Now this is what is called unintentional baiting, and it's pretty much waiting for your team to go in because you don't want to go in first because you're scared. And this is something you have to get over, especially if you're a duelist. If you're playing a duelist and you're not the first one into sight every single time, then you're throwing as a character because you're the only one that has the tools to get those kills as effective as possible. You don't know how many times I've been on a low plat or low gold game ranking my way up that I noticed that people just sit around site and don't do much and don't take initiative and that will end the game so fast because there is nothing you can do about it if you're a duelist or maybe even you if you have to aren't entering and trying to take that initiative to get that first kill. Now on the defensive side of things, your team or you might be over rotating. If one of your teammates calls the guy on A, then you might be automatically <laughs> enticed to go over to A and help them because odds are that's probably where everyone's going to be. But that's not the way you have to play things. Seeing one or two people on site does not guarantee that the site that they're at is going to get hit on, especially at higher ranks where people like to lurk and wait for you to rotate that way they can come up behind you and kill you. Unless your teammate is calling out a full rush and they hear a million footsteps coming at them at once, then odds are that you should stay at your site and just wait for them to, you know, pretty much commit to something. If you or your teammate are getting full rush out of sight, then they should definitely play for retake. Whenever you're getting a full team rushing at you, the last thing you want to do is peek because odds are you get one kill and then you die and you pretty much got nothing. It's back to even. If you're playing for retake and you see a lot of people rushing at you, then you just back out of sight and you wait for the rest of your team to get there. Once the rest of your team gets there, then you all can work together, use your abilities in unison, and try to retake that site without having to lose too many people. And what do you think is a better chance of winning? Your team versus their team, 5 on 5, having to retake a site? Or you against 5 people trying to get at least 1 kill when they rush you when odds are you probably won't get 1? Now, it's these small kind of thoughts that you have to think about if you're really willing to rank up. At lower levels, you learn a lot of habits that aren't going to carry over to the higher ranked games and you're going to have to change your entire way of thinking in order to improve. Now let's take the idea of one and done angles for example. One and done angles are pretty much spaces or certain spots on the map where you could get a kill if the attackers are coming through, but you're going to get immediately traded out or even worse, you won't get a kill at all. When you're defending, sometimes people like to hide in corners that they can't really escape from and especially if you get droned out or arrow darted or even bombed or mollied, there's no escape from that angle and that is why it's called one and done because odds are you only get one kill if they do decide to rush in. Now I see a lot of people playing these angles at lower ranks and that's not what you want to do. Whenever you're defending you want to try and play an angle or a part where you can pretty much escape to another angle if you're being pressured. Valorant is a game about options and you want to have as many options as possible for as long as you can. The second that you limit your options you're hiring the chance of dying more and more. Now moving on to the next step and it's something that is very important to the art of getting good at Valorant is being able to limit your hero pool. So I'm sure a lot of you take pride in being able to play as many characters as possible and I do so myself as well. I do think that I can play every character to a notable degree but I have decided to limit the agents that I play and limit that to about one to three of them. Whenever you do get to the higher ranks most people are going to be very in tune with the agent that they're playing. That being said, in order to compete, you're going to have to be in tune with the agent that you play. And since filling in the higher ranks is inevitable, since you do need a good team comp in order to compete, you are going to want to limit the people that you play and try to get good at at least three of them. Now, whenever I play, I usually play Reyna, I play Omen, just in case I have to fill, and I do play Raze. Now, I have a double duelist and a smoke as my main people that I play, but if I were you, I would try to learn one of each. I have been trying to learn Killjoy just in case I do have to play Sentinel, but I do try to play those three people if I can because I feel like that is who I am the most effective with. You want to make sure that you know the agents that you play like the back of your hand and playing the same agents over and over again will improve consistency more than you will ever know. And speaking of consistency, that might be something that a lot of you have trouble with including myself. There are days where I could hit everything and not miss a shot and there are days where I can't hit anything and I'm getting timed and a lot of the times it is due to the fact that you might have messed up your playing schedule. Ever since I started playing at night, since my stream at that night, 
I play at the same time every single day and that has increased my efficiency and my consistency to a whole degree. I feel like at that time my body knows that it's time to play and I kind of feel the same every day. If I were to play at night and then I get up in the morning then I play in the morning and then I play in the afternoon, my body would not be the same at every single time period. So of course your body would react differently. Sometimes the reaction time would be on point, other times there won't. Sometimes your shot will be on point and other times it won't. And while there is no clear way to get rid of inconsistency, it's going to happen, you are human, I feel like playing at the same time and playing as much time as I can is the best way to try to overcome it. And the last thing I'm going to get into for this video is having your cross replacement. Now I'm sorry to tell you, but if you're under plat, then odds are you have really bad cross replacement. Now trust me, I did this for two ranks. Carrying yourself to plat is easy, maybe even to gold. If you can't carry yourself to at least gold, then you're probably fundamentally not there and you're not ready to progress. Now, I'm sure a lot of you don't want to hear that, but that is honestly the truth. You have to work on your fundamentals and you have to have all the mechanics down in order to rank up. If not, it's just not going to happen. And if you do somehow manage to rank up, maybe you get carried, you're not going to be able to hold down or hold yourself down in that rank. If you get good at fundamentals and you get good at counter strafing and headshot angles and being able to hold positions that are smart and playing smart, I guarantee you, you can get yourself to at least gold. There's no excuse for that. Now, if your crosshair placement is off, it might be because you are not aware of what crosshair placement is. It might be because your sense is too fast or too slow and you can't keep that on where the head is supposed to be. And that is something that you have to do. Trust me, trust me, trust me. If you learn your mechanics, if you learn counter strafing, and if you learn how to tap shoot instead of completely spraying and committing to a spray every time you get into a gunfight, you will rank up. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. This is The Cure. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below if you think I missed anything. Also, make sure to follow the Twitch. We stream almost every single night. I've been playing Immortal Games right now. Let's see if I can keep it. But we stream almost all night, every single night. So I hope to see you all there. Until the next time, guys, be safe. Make sure to wash your hands and good luck on your next games. Pega, he's on it. I think they gotta have to. Get a bunch of yeah, they gotta have. They gotta have. Nice <laughs> 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 uh, Is that kind of four kill? Match point.